Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. The glory of God is in this place. No, I'm not just saying you guys are like, yeah, yeah. No, the glory of God is in this place. I believe that after this worship, I believe that the ground is ready and prepped. And I believe that if tonight you're willing just to set aside your own opinion, if tonight you're just willing to set aside whatever you're going through, I don't know what circumstances you're going through. All of us here sitting, including me standing, we are all going through something. All of us. If someone tells you that they're not going through something, just bless them. But we're all going in, in, in a different, it's, it doesn't have to be th this level, that level, a situation is a situation. And I believe that, this is not in my, in my notes, but I believe that God wants me to read what Jesus already did for us. So as we hear a message, it's not a message of, um, about, wow, for the, fine, for the fine, first time actually, did you got to live, this is my third a uh, series, actually my third message on that series, because I usually start series, this is just a side note, come back to me. Uh, I usually stop on, a, on two messages, too. so today it, there's something special. I believe it with all my heart. Okay, Isaiah 53, I know I didn't tell you, I didn't give you this, but I think we need to read Isaiah 63. And this is talking about Jesus. It says, who has believed, trusted in, relied upon, and clung to, our message of that which was revealed to us. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been disclosed? For the servant of God grew up before him like a tender plant and like a root out of the dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. This is Jesus. Royal, kingly, pomp. That he should look at him in no beauty that we should desire in him. He was despised and rejected and forsaken by men, a man of sorrows and pain. Do you understand that we're talking about Jesus? And do you understand what we can sing and worship songs and sing unto him? Because it's not for us, although God is just so amazing that as we're praising him, the moment that we're praising him, he returns the blessing unto us. But I believe that God wants you to know what he, has, what he sent his son to do. A man of sorrows. Have you ever been depressed? Only a few? Well, some could be a few, right? Have you ever been forsaken, abandoned, talked about? Your name has been trashed? He says, we have a, 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 he says I have a son. My son, that's, he's not only wiping away your sins, he is taking what the enemy took from us since the beginning. And he says, a man of sorrows and pains. You notice I've declared that like three times already. And acquainted with what? With great joy. He says, acquainted with grief and sickness. And like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised. And we did not appreciate his worth or have anything for him. Surely he has borne our griefs, sickness, weaknesses, distresses, and carry our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly consider him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. No part of my message. But I believe that God wants to, you to know who, who do we serve. It's awesome, and I, and, and I think that the rest of our lives on this earth, we need to find out. We need to pursue our identity with God. I am pursuing my identity in God, but I will never pursue it in accuracy and in, in what, what, what the word of God says until I know what my God has done already for me. Because when we come to church, like I always say, this is our dress rehearsal. 
because this, we're just passing by, but this is not our final destination. No, the final destination is in heaven. But God made a, a place not only for our future, right, for our eternity, but he made us a way that you and I can live life the way that he wants us to live. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of pain. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of listening to news and, and, and I'm talking about all this sickness and, and people are, are just being diagnosed with this and people are being diagnosed with that. And then not just physical sickness, emotional sickness, mental health sickness, and then we have financial problems and then we have, you know, our family problems and then we have the problems that have problems. Because the enemy wants to lie to us and he has done a good job. I believe that many times I have really believed the reality of what I'm going through. Like uh, Sarah said that. That this is that we equate our God with our situation. And I'm actually has seen him even lower at times. Like here is God and right here is my problem. How is he going to help me? And as I was in worship and praising the Lord, the Lord said, well, we confuse, sometimes we confuse. The enemy will come and tell you, like I always say, I, I gave my life, this, this December is going to be 22 years I've been walking with Jesus. And it's been quite a journey. But I'm here to tell you that he is a good God. But there has been times in my life when I thought, Sometimes we think that God has more grace, more compassion. Uh, God can heal. God can restore when it's your first time coming to the Lord. I used to think that. Anyone ever thought that? Yeah, like he has more grace. Of course he has more grace because you know what? We didn't know it. Like I was never told about it. So I'm sure that's why he has so much grace for me. But he's not talking about whoever comes first. He's talking about the children of God. That moment that you accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's the moment that those, those words that I just read to you, they stand and that's who you are. That's what we have and nothing can change that truth. So I was having a conversation with God and I told him like, you know, you know, I was always come to him with thanksgiving and that's what I'm working on like if I'm going to go to God no matter how I feel I'm going to start by thanking him thank you Lord uh, that I I am breathing and I have to think like that if you want to if you want to overcome if we want to start be, being uh, strong in the Lord start wherever you are so I have to say you go good morning Lord thank you that I'm breathing because there's other people that need, a, need a, a, an oxygen tank. There's other people that are hospitalized, but I am not. I'm, I'm, I'm in my house, on my bed. Might not feel well, but hey, I still have breath. So if I still have breath, then I have your breath. There is still hope, and I need to endure. So as I was doing my meditation, because that's what I call meditation, is just thanking God. I encourage you, uh, as we move forward uh, Wednesdays, get a journal, uh, a journal, start a new journal, and journal every morning, even if it's five minutes, journal the moment you get up and journal at least a few sentences and find things that you're so grateful to God about your life. And probably a lot of you are going through a lot of things. Because I, I believe that this room is heavy of heavy burdens. I believe that some of us tonight I've, I, I are fully shackled. And I believe that the enemy is lying to us. That he's not allowing us to see who really our God is. And that he is bigger than my problem. That he's bigger than, than my family situation. He's bigger than my finances. He's bigger than my depression, my anxiety, my cancer. You name it, whatever it is, he is bigger than that. And he already paid a price. 
Because I was having, as I say, a conversation. I said, Lord, I know that you saved me t 10, uh, 22 years ago. And I know you had a lot of grace, I remember. And, and some of you don't know my, my story, but the way I, I, Jesus found me. You know, have you, have you ever been in a situation that it's bleak, it's hopeless, right? At this time, I don't have the Lord, but it's hopeless. But then all of a sudden, you have an intervention. I told the Lord, tonight, I want interventions of Jesus in your life. We talk about suddenlies, right? Suddenly means you've been waiting and you've been very patient and you've been enduring and you haven't moved. So many times we're believing for suddenlies, but we have done nothing. So today the Lord said to me, you know, it's okay because if you haven't done nothing, you can ask just for an intervention because I am so great with chaos. It's like, you think I'm afraid of chaos? Go back to Genesis 1, read it. It says in that beginning, what is it said? That it was chaos. And the presence of God wasn't afraid. It says the presence of God was hovering over the chaos of the earth, of the universe, whatever you call it. He said, I'm not afraid of chaos. I'm not afraid of disappointments. I'm not afraid of being people that are offended. I'm not afraid of sickness. I'm not afraid of sorrows. I'm not afraid of pain. I'm not afraid. And I want you not to be afraid. Because this year we're going to really, really, with all of my heart, believe we're going to celebrate. But really. That we wake up in the morning and you're really thankful. But see, those are seeds. Those are little things that we do every day. You get in the word every day. May I ask you that without this word, we cannot live. You cannot live just by sitting on a Wednesday, listening to podcasts and coming on a Sunday. And, and we thank you, of course, right? Because we're learning. And this is our, you know, this is our, our halftime. Like I said, we come and we, we're, we're talking. What are we going to do in our, in our other half of the game? But every day, what we do every day, it matters. It matters to God. It matters to your life. And I believe that God wants you to settle it once and for all and to know who he is. So let us go to Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. And I believe that there is many people. No, I don't want to say many people. There's a few people that are sitting here today. And you have contemplated. And I'm going to just be bold. You have contemplated suicide more than once in the last month. But I'm not going to call you up. But if that's you, at the end of the service, I want you to come talk to me because I have a word from heaven. But if it's you and you say, you know what, it doesn't matter what people think, I'm just going to get up, it's okay too. But I believe that tonight you're going to, going to walk out of this room, this double doors, and we're going to remind ourselves whom we serve. Okay, so are you there? Yeah. Hebrews? Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. You know, the enemy tells you that you're the only one who's going through whatever you're going through. He will tell you, no one, don't tell anyone because no one is going or feeling the way that you're feeling. So keep your mouth shut. But here he says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of, cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every what? And the sin that is so hard to ensnare us. Does it hard? Is what? So easily ensnares us. And let us run with what? The race that is set before us, looking unto who? The author and finisher of our faith. So at, at faith. So at any point, let's say we missed it. You stopped running. You probably sat down. You actually started your new chapter. You named it. I don't know what you named it. The day that the woman went crazy. The day that the day that the year that I lost my cool, or whatever, right? But you know, it doesn't matter how much you write on your own book, because you're not the author. 
and you're not the finisher. He is the author and he's the finisher. He has the privilege to pick up the pen and write your story at the moment that you choose him back. So it says, let us run with endurance that race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Thank God I don't have writing privileges for my life. Who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him. You know that we need to consider Jesus every day when we are in, in a pickle, when we're in transition, when we're in a, in a place that we don't understand, that we don't like, that is very uncomfortable. That's the moment that we have to consider him. It says, consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You know that the only way to stay in the race is to endure. It doesn't say, you know what, let us become, let us run the great race of comfort. Let us run joyfully. It doesn't say that. No, he says, let us joy with endurance. And I'm a, I'm a geek for knowing what, okay, what's endurance? Because I don't know what endurance means for, for you. Like to me, I can only do five push-ups and that's my endurance. For you, it might be 50. It doesn't matter. You see, we have our own terms. I'm going back to the word. What does the word of God have to say about endurance? It, in the Greek means steadfastness, constancy, and endurance. Again, let's repeat it again, right? It says, a characteristic of a man or a woman who is not swerved from his deliberate, deliberate or deliberate purpose in his or her life, loyalty to faith and piety, but even the greatest trials and suffering. Do you understand that like this person who has given that life to Christ, it's in for life. And they already know who they are. So they're not going to check out. They're not going to, I was going to bring my own towel, every, you know, because sometimes I carry the, my white towel. You know, I want, you want to give up? I encourage you, don't carry a white towel in your purse. Because there is, that, there is that desire sometimes because life is, it's, life is hard. The life of a Christian is hard, but it's just, just because it's hard, that doesn't mean we're hopeless. That doesn't mean that we don't overcome. It just means that we are in training. But it says, but if we don't learn how to endure, it says that we're going to become weary. It says you're going to become actually very exhausted. And at some point, my friend, you're going to want to quit. That was said another transition. You're going to lose hope if you don't learn how to endure. Another word for endurance, the power to withstand great pain and hardship. Who wants to sign up for that, huh? Sign me, me, sir. The ability to continue despite stress, fatigue, or adverse conditions. I read this, I was like, I was hoping that endurance was just like, you know, go for five miles. Learn a few chapters of the Bible. You know, you know, get, get, get served in your church, pray for a few people, and try to live as comfortable as you can. But then I can't just read this part because I'm the, that's how I am. If I'm going to read chapter 12, I need to know what happened in chapter 11. So I went to see chapter 11 because I love chapter 11. Hebrews 11 talks about the, the uh, I call it the, the whole of faith, right? But I encourage you, your homework for tonight is that you read the entire, the entire Hebrews 11. And that's the, the witnesses that they were talking about. And let me give you just a little bit of background. He's talking to these people saying, you know what? It doesn't matter how hard it gets. It doesn't matter, you know, how much you want to quit. You need to endure. You need to stay the course. You need to uh, run the race. You need to get every weight that you're carrying. And you need to put, put, possess yourself or put yourself in a position that you're, you're running a holy race. 
Because in those times is when people, Judaism was turning into Christianity. And you know what that was that happened to them, right? They were being persecuted. They actually took their homes. They were being killed. They were being, so we're not t- talking about people that we're talking right now, you know. We need to just persevere because in, in Facebook, people are so mean and they're going to talk about us. That's how I talk to myself when I read something, you know. Oh, they're going to be talking about you. My God, what an endurance, right? It's like doing this. And it's not that it doesn't offend us. It's just that that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about real life. And real life has to be lived every day. Hebrews 11.1 says this about faith. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But I don't know about you, but I want evidence. Remember that song? Somebody had a show like that, right? Was it like that or was it me? (laughs) Evidence. I need evidence. I need proof. Thank you for the substance, but we want to see something. (laughs) Appreciate you, Jesus. Appreciate what you've done, but this girl here, we need a little bit of evidence. But see, when we're asking already for evidence, that means we already lost our hope. Because it says, is the substance of things hoped for. So if I continually hope for, and if you were here a few uh, Wednesdays ago, I told you that hope is the expectation, is the greatest expectation of the outcome of your problem. Like the greatest expectation. So if right now, if you're going through something and it's really like it's out of your league, it's out of your hands, it's out of your control, I want you to go write it and I want you to write the hope that you have for it. But not your hope, like, okay, hopefully they come to know the Lord in next year. No, the, I, my hope is that they will come to know Jesus today. My hope is that whatever you're believing for them, if, if they are probably having troubles and and probably they lost their way because life was too hard. My hope is that they will return to Jesus today. Jesus, you give them dreams. See, that's a different hope, right? And he says, that's our substance, our substance. We have been called, we have to, we have been called to endure. And so I was trying to Finally, I said, I don't have any stories about me enduring. You know, I wish I could when it comes in the physical so you can understand. But I, I, was, I went on Google because Google is so wonderful. You want to learn anything, go on Google. And if you don't believe it, go on Snopes. And then you'll know, like, whatever, right? So don't take it by Google. Go to Snopes as well. So I was, I was thinking, who, who can I talk about? Someone that endure Because you have to learn how to navigate in order to endure, you have to learn how to navigate. We as Christians, we need to learn how to navigate. I'm going to tell you what. We need to learn how to navigate disappointment. I'm not good with disappointment, are you? We need to learn how to navigate loss. You know that in the church, we don't even know how to, how to grieve. Somebody passes away, and we're like, well, you are allowed to cry this week. Next week, you better be smiling. Because I don't know what to do with it, and we're, we're not going to touch the subject. We ner- we'll need to learn how to endure in criticism. And that's a, that, that's a hmm. look, I'm already twitching. <laughs> like, oh, did we say criticism? Like, I go into like, we need to learn how to navigate betrayal. If we learn how to navigate with the word of God and with the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I can endure. You and I can withstand. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you because I've been withstanding. And sometimes I don't want to withstand. Sometimes, hey, I do. It says that you need to be like your best and your, uh, your worst circumstance. Uh, sometimes I don't want to be my best. But then I have to go back here because who wants to live like that? I want to live and God wants you to live. 
And God wants us to win a world that is in such a need of hope. I mean, if we're hopeless, can you imagine the world? When I have days that I'm like, you know what? I don't see any hope. Then I remember myself, hey, remember, it's not a feeling. It's a, it's a person that lives inside of you, and his name is Jesus. You have to talk to yourself. People already think you're weird. My husband always says this, so I might as well, right? In my car, I don't talk to people on the phone and I don't pick up because I forget where I'm going. So what I do is I pretend that I'm talking on the phone, but I'm actually praying. And if I have to say, like, you better, I will say that. I'm, I'm pointing at the, my mirror, my rear view mirror. There have been people that have stopped and I've been like, they don't know because, I don't, of course, I'm not going to lower the windows, you know, I'm not that crazy. Oh, and David, I was, I was like, you know, devil, you're a liar. Who knows about face? Because you know I'm very animated. Like, they take pictures of me. I'm always like, <laughs> my husband is always like, you even see the light shining. And he's laying hands on people. And he has this smile. And then they put one of me like. <laughs> so I have come to terms. It is what it is. You just rejoice. However, as I was doing and I was declaring, because it, was, it, was, it wasn't a good morning for me, but hey, I'm teaching you what I'm doing, right? I'm not teaching you something that I learned. No, this is what we do. This is how we do it, baby. So I was like, you devil, because all these lies were like, and I remembered, you know, just because they're flying, I'm not going to make a nest in my head. I'm done nesting all these thoughts. Because they're infesting me, so I'm done, right? And I'm doing this, like, I'm done. And, 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 and it, it felt like, and it was right here. They probably know me because it was when the train trucks, you know, and they close it, and you're like 15 minutes sitting there. <laughs> and I was like, this thoughts. And after I went into that, I went into, like, I fixed my mirror like, like that, like, because I need to see my eyes. And mm, you know what? You know what? You're devil, you're a liar. A liar. And I, 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 you have to be aggressive. Hey, I, I was feeling like I was going to lose my mind. So, hey, you're a liar. Liar. My God I took every pain. And I was like that in every infirmity. And I was going like, pain, pain. And, and all of a sudden, I remember where I was. <laughs> and I was like, mm. I was so embarrassed. They were laughing at me. They were literally laughing at me because they were two young kids, you know, in their 20s. They were like, <laughs> I think they were videotaping me because <laughs> they had their phones. And I was like, and it was like, I don't know, it takes like for eternity there, right? I don't know, four minutes, 10. But I was like, bam, 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 you know. And I wanted to I don't get out of the car because you need to stand up, right? And feel like, ah, fix my chair and... Elevate church. <laughs> no. But it was, you sometimes have to do crazy things. Because that's how I'm going to learn endurance. I'm not going to learn it one day and I'm going to be strong. So I was trying to look, oh my God, time fly. I was trying to look for this, um, for a story and I found a story and actually happened in Australia. And it was in Australia. Australians are crazy people, but great people. So if you're from Australia, like, I admire you. But they have very different things that they do. So I found this guy, actually. Uh, I forgot his name. thought I wrote it down. But you know, when you make so many notes, you're like, let's call him Willie. No, no. Because it's a true story. It's a true story. Okay, but I'm going to tell you while I find it. So it's a story about this guy, 61-year-old guy. And they, they do this marathon. And then, they don't call it not even a triathlon, they call it a marathon. And it's actually supposed to be done in nine days. Nine days. And so the best of the best go there. And you sign up because you're going to be running the race for like at least nine days. Right? And then all of us, and, you have, and I saw this is an old video, like, you know, the, the guys, they're like in their 20s, they're like muscle and everything. And you know how we like to show our gear, right? So they were ready. And then all of a sudden he comes, and he's 61 years old. 
And he actually, what he did for life, they asked him, are you an athlete? He was like, no, no, but I, I feel like I need to run this race and I feel like I can win. And so they asked him, okay, so what do you do? He says like, well, uh, I have a potato farm. And he says, uh, until four years ago, we didn't have any money, so we only li live from the land, and we always have cattle and we have sheep. So since I was a little boy, when storms would come, I would go and actually gather the sheep, rally the entire sheep. And they asked him, how many sheep do you have? And he said, 2,000. And they said, how many acres? Oh, we have 2,000 acres. So he says, as a little boy, until four years prior to that, which he was, what, 50-something? He says, hey, that was when we were able to afford a tractor. So now it takes us less, less time to go gather the sheep. So he says, oh, I'm ready. And, they, and they're mocking him, right? Like they're trying, like, mm -hmm. And they're asking him all these questions because he was, you know, he just came with his little, like, farmer suit. Like he did, like, go watch it. I'm going to post it on Facebook. And then he's wearing like this, like this, this um, boot start, like rubbery. And like, he looked like he was going to the farm. And so they said, well, like, there is no rules that you cannot enter. So they, they signed him up and he, and, oh, and then asked him, so when you went and you rally all the sheep, he said, how do you do it? How did you get 2,000? He's like, for four days as a kid, since he was like five or seven, he says that he will do it in four days without sleeping and running, right? So, that, so the, the thing starts, and then they, of course, they put it on him. You know how people are? When you're down, they kick you, but when you win, they're like, oh, my gosh, right? Now they're a selfie. But at the beginning, they're following him because he's still like, he doesn't look like an athlete. And then he runs this way. I, you should watch it. He really runs like this, like shuffling. <laughs> like, with no care. No care. You should watch him. He's like. And so, and then now, like, all the athletes are like, I don't know, 20 miles. And, and, and the distance is 544 miles. So the other ones are already gone, like, I don't know, 50 miles ahead, and he's in his first mile. Like, so they're coming, and they come back to ask him, and he's like, I'm just running. <laughs> I'm running. What's your plan? Just run. <laughs> right? So he doesn't know anything. He just knows that he has been practicing. Every day he has been doing that. So... He didn't ask, he didn't read, let, let, me, let me read what, it, what we're supposed to do, you know? Like, so the way they're supposed to do it is that they sleep, they run for 18 hours, and they sleep at night for six hours. So he passed them. He's like shuffling, you know? And he sees all the tents. He's like, hmm, I wonder what they have tents. He continue. And every day he continued. He never stopped. And of course, during the course of the, you know, of, of the race, there's people giving you water. And all of a sudden, like, what the hell happened? That's what they said. I'm just repeating. <laughs> Where are the other ones? I was like, I don't know. I'm... So what have you been doing? Just running. <laughs> you want milk? And he's like, yeah, he's still, he, he won't stop. So, like, so the, a truck has to be with him. He's drinking milk. This is good. And he broke the world record. Is that what it's called? Because he arrived two days earlier than everyone. So they were like, no. <laughs> you, the potato guy? The, what, what? The shuffler? Like. And he was like, hi, everybody. You, you should watch him. I'll give you the name before I f I'll find his name. But he's from Australia, 1983. And then they're, they're, they're interviewing him. And he says, so, so what, what made you win? He's like, I've been doing this since a little boy. He says, I have run distances without sleeping. He says, I was like, I could, I could remember. And I still do it if I have to. And he says, all I kept thinking when I was running, pretend that you're going to rally all your sheep and they're in danger. And the storm is coming, so I cannot stop. 
So see, he won because his eyes were fixated on the prize. And the prize wasn't even the money. And guess, guess how much the prize was? $10,000. And guess what he did? He gave it all away to, to the crew that helped them. He gave it all away to the other people that were running. They said that he didn't even take a penny. But I thought, and you see him, you have to go see his face. He was like, at the end, okay, one word or, or give us a sentence. What kept you going and how did you, how did you, uh, you know, achieve this? And he's like, it was like Forrest Gump, you know, I just kept running. That was his, I mean, he was sincere. He said, I'm not going to stop. And I think when we run the race that God has called us to do, because we all have a different lanes and we all are, you know, running different things. But when life gets hard and we get tired, we, we pitch a tent. And he never even got one. And I thought, my God, there's so much to learn. Like, and then I thought about, about David thought about David because I love David and we love to preach about David. I think I even preached one sermon that was called Kill Your Giant, right? And we love to talk about gi giants, right? Like, because we are the children of God and we have a covenant, but we don't endure because we don't like it because it's uncomfortable because people are going to criticize you. People are going to think you're crazy. People are going to tell you, you know, you know, I come back to earth. No, it's because I'm, I'm on earth that I need to bring heaven in my home. But we talk about David, and, and I thought, David, that's what David was able to, to, you know, to win the battle with the giant. It wasn't because that moment God said, you know, David, I anointed you because you're anointed. Because we think the anointing is going to keep us and take us everywhere. No, it's not your anointing that keeps you everywhere. It's your character. You could be anointed, and you know what anointing means? It's just the presence of God in your life. But when I read about all the people in, in, in uh, Hebrews 11, it says that those people, when somebody will come and, and present the gospel to them, they had to think. They had to really think, and they had to think, should I join that house? Because if I'm joining the house, I'm, I'm literally surrendering my life, that life of my children and everything. We're willing to, to give up our lives literally just because they were going to join, join the church. That was the endurance that he's talking about. Now we need to pray about, I don't know, are you going to be part of our church? I don't know because this looks like pumpkins and... You know. Don't tell me about this, please. We exist to win the lost. And every day, Jesus created the world in every day. And we live by faith. And he says that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But the only day... That many times as Christians, we have a problem enduring because some church is having a family thrill night. They should be pink. Pumpkins are not pink. But if you want to, if you want to uh, volunteer and donate beautiful pumpkins that are real, hey, I'll take them. I've seen beautiful pink ones. But we have a budget. I fixed some of this. Can you tell? No, I won't show you. But what I'm saying, we are so distracted with things that do not really matter. As a church, I thought, you know what? We have one opportunity to let the city know that there's a church here that we want to win souls. And if we can get a child, we can get a family. And if we can get a family, we can get a city. And if we can get a city, we can get a state. If we get a state, we get the world, you know. That's the way we do it. Every time we're going to do like family thrill or whatever, I'm like, oh my God, am I willing to go through the endurance? But yes, I can because I have the Holy Spirit and he has given me the ability 
to withstand. He will never ask you to stand or persevere if you didn't have the ability to do so. In the last scripture, Romans 5.5 5 says this. Therefore, since we have been justified. Do you know that you're justified? Listen to this. Chew on this. Close your eyes. Pretend that you're at the movie that you love so much or whatever you do. And then like, okay, I'm going to hear this and this is for me. But it says, therefore, since you, I'm going to make it like you. You have been justified. That is, acquitted of sin. Declare blameless before God by what? By faith. Let us grasp the fact that we have peace with God in the joy of reconciliation with him through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. Through him, we also have access by faith into his remarkable state of grace in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope in the confident assurance of experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God, the manifestation of his excellence and power. And not only this, but with joy, let us exalt in our suffering. In other words, it says, in other translations say, let us glory in our suffering. See, you don't glory in the mountaintop. You glory in your suffering. And rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardships, distress, pressure, trouble produces patient endurance and endurance proven character, spiritually in maturity, improving character, hope and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Such hope in God's promises never disappoint us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. To us. You know we want shortcuts. I have learned not to take shortcuts anymore. And I hate it because shortcuts are wonderful, right? If I can give you something tonight, it's do not use waste. No, just kidding. You know waste. <laughs> do you know how many times I have detoured out of my race? That means me coming home and I want to get home and then... Now we're like so like patience is like a cuss word, right? Why patience, right? I don't even want to wait. I don't even want to go to a restaurant. I don't want to be waiting. I actually would like for me to call and they already have my, my table already done for me and I don't have to wait for anyone. And they just sit me there in a quiet room and I just eat and then they bring my bed. Because nobody wants to wait in traffic. The last time I was like, I am sick of traffic, so I use Waze, Google Maps. At the same time, let's see who wins. But people told me, Waze, Waze is better. It gives you like, oh my gosh, I was in a place that I should have never been. All I know is I was in Wilmington, lost. And I was like, you, and I was one of those moments that I talk in my car, you Waze. No, no, no. You didn't have the patience. You wanted to gain three minutes. <laughs> Only three minutes, Virginia. And now you're stuck in traffic. True story. I arrived there in three and a half hours. And it was an hour and a half drive. For three minutes. Because, I, you know, because how it is, you don't know the area, so you pass it, so we route to you. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to end up in TJ. And I don't have my passport. And they're going to hear my accent and, you know, I'm going to have to call my husband. But I was like. The, that's life. We don't want to endure. We want to get shortcuts. We want to make our own way. And I believe that what God is asking you tonight is like, hey, you know, surrender your will. Because. It's just like Jesus. Jesus said, nevertheless. You know how many times I told the Lord, nevertheless? No, I said, Father, if have this cup be drunk by somebody else. No, Virginia, you need to be that. You need to, you need to do this. Uh, nope, I don't want the cup. I want the cup that run is over. The one that the, the, the Psalms 23 talks, right? No, this is the, the cup of suffering. 
but it's just because I'm developing your character so you can overcome and so we can win the world and we can and we can run the endurance until we finish and then we hear well done good and faithful servant I don't want to hear well you're done if today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today